Welcome back to Question Time, patterned after Question Time at the Parliament in England, although we talk about a whole lot of different things here. And Steve Brennan has a question in his hands. You know, Joe, we have some uh, market forecasters that make a lot of noise, get a lot of acclaim for uh, predicting bear markets. But then you go back and look at the track record and you find that they like predicted 30 of the last two bear markets. Um, you know, the kind of a, a broken clock, right, twice a day. Uh, you know, kind of what are your thoughts on like perma bears and all the attention they get and all the fixation they sometimes get from people? Um, well, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I struggle to understand it. I, I really do. Um, I'm not sure why exactly some people uh, have this desire to be negative all the time, uh, especially when there's so much pain involved in being negative all the time um it, it's it's almost like they're 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 uh, what, masochistic is when you want to uh, inflict harm on others what's what's the other one what's what's the opposite i don't remember um you know i, I just don't understand why people want to do this and i think i actually i mean i think i do but i don't know why people get sucked into it I, you know all of them are out there and when i talk about perma bears i'm usually thinking about people that are negative about the economy Yes, there are people that are negative about stocks and negative about other things, but it's usually driven by this negativity about the economy. And the first thing I would say is that, well, if you're concentrating on the economy to figure out the market, you're doing this backwards because the way to do it is to look at the market to figure out the economy. Um, but that's not what they do. Um, and they take every piece of information, every piece of economic information and turn it into something negative. So why are they doing that? Well, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of money to be made uh, playing on, preying on people's fears. And there's a lot of money to be made if you can go back and claim, hey, I got this recession right. And I, I told everybody to get out before the bear market hit. And you're good as long as nobody checks the rest of your track record. If they just check that one time, they might be okay. And there's a bunch of people out there like that, you know, those stop clocks. Um, so, you know, one of the things I would say is that we, we have these people now because of the internet that, that attract attention and they're all trying to sell you something. Uh, and I'm not pretending that we're not trying to sell you something too. We're trying to sell you on something that we think is, is worthwhile. That has value. Uh, where I question is the value of what these people are selling. So, uh, just think about this for a second. Economists spend their lives doing nothing. They've dedicated their lives to studying the economy. And so you would think that someone who's dedicated their life to studying the economy would be able to predict a recession. And yet, they're not any good at it. Uh, the Philadelphia Federal Reserve does a regular survey of forecasters, professional forecasters. Now, they're not all economists, but the vast majority of them are. And uh, the results are pretty, pretty grim <laughs> of the last... Uh, well, and first of all, I mean, look, there's a reason why people were looking for recession, right? They want to avoid the bear market that goes with it. But, you know, there have been bear markets that didn't involve a recession. And there have been recessions that didn't involve a bear market. So you have to be careful there. You know, it, it, it's not just as simple as saying, I'm going to avoid this recession and therefore I'm going to avoid the bear market. It doesn't work that way. So, you know, if you look at, at, at the numbers, if you go back to the 1960s, not, we, I didn't go back past the 60s, but go back to the 60s, the average loss on a bear market associated with recession is minus 8.8%. And that's real. That's the, the real number. That's a, in, in, inflation adjusted. So minus 8.8% real. That's a pretty steep contraction. And look, some of them are a lot worse. 2007, 2008, that was a minus 31 and change. Uh, and by the way, the, the, the ultimate low or the low part of that was actually you know more than that from peak to trough. But by the end of the year 2008, it was a minus 31 and change. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's worth avoiding if you can do it. So these professional forecasters, you go back and look at it, there have been, uh, let's see, let's see, there have been 10 times since the 1960s when uh, the, uh, the, the percentage of the economists in the poll went over 30%. They were expecting a recession, expecting the economy to contract in the next month. Okay, so they're saying 30 times that's happened. Well, I got news for you. We only had eight recessions. So, or excuse me, 10 times. We only had eight recessions. So they didn't get that right. But the more important thing is they were late every time except for two. In 1980 and 1990, they predicted the recession ahead of time. Uh, however, everyone after that, the other eight, 
Yeah, they were negative. Every time they were, they were, they were, uh, we were already in recession by the time they figured out we were in, re before they started predicting it, we were already in it. And in fact, you look at the last one, it was six months we were into recession before they ever figured it out. Uh, go back to 2007, if you were around back then, go back and think about the way things were in 2008, early 2008. There were a lot of people, including the Fed, who until the summer of 2008, really until August, or until really September, who were saying, we can still avoid recession, we can still avoid recession. And you go back and look now, well, the official dating of it was in December of 2007. So again, people were talking about, we can avoid recession in September of 2008, when we were already nine months into it. So, you know, these are people, again, who are professionals. This is all they do is try to figure out the economy, and they can't do it. So what makes you think that some idiot on Twitter is going to figure it out? What makes you think that this guy, and I won't mention names here, but what makes you think that this guy who's an ex-sales trader at Goldman Sachs, who's very well known, styles himself as a macro guy, what makes you think that idiot's going to figure it out? If he was any good at it, Goldman Sachs, he'd still be at Goldman Sachs because believe me, he can make more money at Goldman Sachs than he can talking to you. So if he could be there doing this, he'd be doing it, and he's not. So what does that tell you? You know, what are you going to do? You're going to trust the guy uh, on Twitter who, who styles himself the Bond King and wears some stupid hat uh, and is actually in reality just an insurance salesman? You're going to trust that guy? Really? I, I You know, I'm sorry, but you're, you're listening to the wrong people. And by the way, you don't need to be listening to any of these people. Um, the economists especially, you know, the economists are not concerned. And that's another kind of false thing here. People think that these economists, we're trying to protect me as an investor. No, they're not. All they're trying to do is protect the economy. That's what they do. Uh, they don't, and the stock market and the economy, by the way, are inversely correlated. You know when the best time to buy stocks is? Right in the middle of recession. <laughs> So do you want to know when the recession starts? And, and uh, you know, yeah, OK, if you could figure that out, fine. You know, you would think, too, and I've said this many times, the market gives you the best glimpse of the future you're ever going to get. It's going to be way better than The Economist. And guess what? It's not very good. <laughs> if you go back and look at it, let me just see. I got my numbers here. Let's see. Um, Let's see, there have been 31 stock market declines since the, 19, since the 1969 recession. There have been 31 market declines of 10% or more. 31, and we only had eight recessions. So the stock market's not gonna help you. So that's not gonna help. The bond market's not gonna help you either, by the way. The bond market can help you sometimes, but it's also wrong a lot. And in fact, we just had a, a, an incident right now that's ending this week about an instance where the market was dead wrong. And the people pushing the 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 the, uh, the narrative of the last few weeks about oh the market fell because the economy's getting worse, and they based that on one week's worth of uh, unemployment claims and a couple of other reports that were weak. And where are we now? And bonds rallied on that. We went all the way down to 370, 368, whatever the number was. So bonds were were confirming it and saying yes, the economy is getting worse. And today we're at four percent. Why? Well, because people are looking at one data point. Are you kidding me? Jobless claims went to 250 and, and everybody panicked. Well, now they're back to 227. Well, I guess everything's wonderful. Everybody says, oh, the, the consumer is hurting. And we got a retail sales report this morning uh, up 1%. Now, look, you can't just look at the headlines. You really want to analyze the economy. You got to look at the internals on these things. I saw a, a, a guy this morning, someone I know personally, by the way, who has turned himself into a Twitter perma bear. Uh, and I, I don't, I won't say who he is because that's not fair. I'm not, you know, you, you, you'll run across him if you do. He's an economist. He is a professional economist. Uh, he once asked me for a job and I said, I don't really need an economist. Um, but now he's out on Twitter trying to make a buck and God bless him. He's trying to make a buck, but you know, he comes out this morning. He doesn't say anything about, he's been negative about the economy the entire time. And, I don't know, two, three years, whatever it is. He hasn't been around that long on Twitter, but he's been negative the entire time. So what did he concentrate on this morning? Oh, industrial production went down. Industrial production was minus 0.6. He didn't say anything about retail sales. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Both of these reports are skewed by something, and you have to be aware of what's going on in the world. So you look at the retail sales report, and you had a surge up 1%, and a big chunk of that was in automobile sales. Now, why would that be? Well, let's see. 
there was a it was a software glitch at all the auto dealers that kept everybody from buying a car for about two weeks. So what do you think happened? I, I'm just going to guess that when the software thing got fixed, everybody's car deal went through. So is the 1% retail sales number jump in July, does it mean anything? No. It's a positive number. And if you take out autos, it was still positive, by the way. If it's X autos, it was up 0.4. It's still a pretty good number. But he didn't say anything about that. He focused on industrial production because industrial production was negative. But why was it negative? Okay, let's take a look at that. If you go and read the report, actually read the damn thing because there's no way he read it. He might have skimmed it, but there's no way he read it because he was out eight at nine, uh, nine seventeen or something like that. He's got a report on Twitter, man, and the report came out at nine fifteen. So I mean, he's ready to go. My guess is he already knew what he was going to say before he ever got on the air. But what was what was what were the, the the factors that made this report look negative? Well, number one was the hurricane barrel. And I will tell you that uh, the, the report itself says that knocked uh, quite a bit off of the off of the number. Uh, the other thing was this manufacturer or this uh, thing with auto sales. Auto sales also, if you look at automobile production, uh, had to pull back because the inventory backed up. Well, no kidding, because of the software glitch. So you had a two three weeks or whatever the software problem. So production had to had to slow down a little bit. Uh, there's nothing in this report that's all that negative. Oh, another one by the way which is, oh my God, the economy must be awful. Utility production went down. Yeah, you guys checked the thermometer lately? Now, I don't know about everywhere else, but here the last three weeks, last four weeks, well, actually that's August, I guess, but even in July, you know, we, we got some little, little bit milder weather than we normally do this time of year. Look, everybody wants to concentrate on the negative because it makes, it, get, it gets attention drawn. And everybody wants to talk to the negative. Why are you negative? You know, what's the disaster? And I'll tell you something else too. A lot of this is political. In it, and I'm not going to pick on one side or the other, but obviously the Republicans right now are very negative about the economy. Why are they negative? Well, because there's a Democrat in office. And you know what? When there was a Republican in office, the Democrats were negative. This is the way it goes. So it's politics. you got to tune this stuff out. So what do you do? What am I saying? Should you just ignore these people? Well, look, I'll tell you something. You want to be a good economic forecaster? You want to predict recession? I, I'll tell you what to do. At the beginning of every year, say, we will not have a recession this year. You know why? Because you only get one about every seven years. So six out of seven, I'll take that all day long, man. That's a good batting average. So just come in every year and say, just expect you're not going to have a recession. You'll be good. You'll be better than the vast majority of forecasters out there. Now, you want to put a number on it, that's going to be more difficult. But if you want to put a number on it, yeah, pick the average. Look, Pick the trend. 2% growth. We're going to get 2% growth this year. 2% growth. 2% growth. Say that every year. You're going to be pretty damn close. So, you know, what I'm saying here is that you need to tune these people out because they're going to cause you to lose money. They're going to cause you to lose money because they're going to keep you out of the market or they're going to cause you to sell at the wrong time and you're not going to be able to get back in. You need to stick to the program. If you've got a strategic asset allocation, which is what you've got to have, if you're investing in this market and you don't have a strategic allocation, a strategic asset allocation, you know what you have? Nothing. You don't have a strategy. You got to have a strategy. How does anybody get into something like this with no plan? I don't understand it, but if you've got a plan, you got to stick to it. Now, are there things that you should do that you can look at and say, you know, maybe I should take some money off the table? Yeah, there are. Most of them are technical. Most of them have to do with momentum uh, and they can help you. They're not going to be perfect. There are going to be times where, you know, you're going to get a signal on a, on a technical indicator, a momentum indicator or something. It's going to be a false signal. That's the nature of the beast. You, if you're going to try to do anything tactical, you know you're going to get a lot, a lot of false positives, and you're going to have to be able to reverse yourself very quickly and admit you were wrong. Otherwise, you're just you, you're not going to get anywhere. So, I, I like I said, I don't really understand the perma bears. I don't understand why they're so negative. I, I think part of it is political. I think part of it is just wanting to draw attention to themselves. But it is not it is not real forecasting. It is not doing you any favors. They can't predict it. The guys that are professionals at this can't predict it. So what, don't think that that guy on, on Twitter or on Facebook or wherever or your buddy down at the country club, they can't predict recessions. Nobody can. So just stop listening to these guys. They're not worth listening to. Sometimes they're entertaining, actually. You know, I'll tell you something. I was I was on a, on a, on a podcast one time, and I won't mention who this was either, 
but I was on there and he, 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 you know, we were talking back and forth. And at one point in the conversation, he goes, man, you say, I don't know a lot. Well, yeah, it's because I don't know. Uh, he hasn't had me back on. I guess that, I guess I don't know is not very interesting, but it's the truth. So either be interesting or be truthful. I'm going to stick with truthful. So why don't you get in on the conversation? Put your questions in the comments section down below.